Welcome back to the Dou TV Dota 2 Cup. This is going to be game two of our best of three series between Andrew Pacemaker and Newbie Miracle. Game one, looking really solid for EP. They did well in all their lanes, got so much farm for their mid and safe lane uh, heroes, the Gyrocopter and the Shadow Fiend. And at that point, all of the pressure was on the Magnus to perform. And unfortunately, the last three RPs, I think they averaged like less than a hero hit per RP cast. It just didn't work out for them. And um, well, with that, we're going to move into game number two. I'm going to see again joined by Kefka Dota. Yeah, the Magnus didn't really perform well last game. He, it kind of, it's hard to follow up after the early laning phase where he got completely crushed by the Gyro. And then he's kind of on tilt after that. And it's really hard to get a good mindset and uh, get a good RP after that. But some amazing drafting from Energy Pacemaker already, I think. Uh, the early pick from Shadow Fiend, from uh, Newbie, the first pick. And then Energy Pacemaker, like, okay, they are gonna probably going to pick Earthshaker after the Shadow Fiend to guard him. And we pick Clockwork. That's an amazing counter against Earthshaker. So some uh, good uh, thinking ahead here from Energy Pacemaker. Yeah, Rubik and the Clock both do very well against that Earthshaker. You can steal the fissure used against them. And um, yeah, Clock, it's always very sad whenever Earthshaker gets cogs in. You can't do anything about it. And on the dire side, Clockwork has a really reasonable laning stage, can pull back the creeps with the cog trick over in the side of the trees, and I think in general, Andrew Pacemaker started things off really well, and they're gonna secure fans' gyrocopter again. This draft is looking scary already for Miracle. Yeah, some uh, impressive drafting already from Energy Pacemaker, and I wonder what Noob is gonna go for. They ban off the Storm Spirit, that's pretty understandable. You don't, in general, you don't want to play against that hero when you're Shadow Fiend, because as soon as uh, you get level 6, you can get solo killed from anywhere. Uh, but other than that, I wonder if they want to pick up some heroes that are good against Clockwork, but the Rubik is already gone, so it's kind of hard. You already have Earthshack here, you have to have a good range support, and it's not... You can pick uh, Disruptor here, I think. It's gonna be quite hard for that hero to do some work here. Yeah, I think the most likely choice for Newbie Miracle would be like something like a Witch Doctor, but that's not necessarily good against Clock. They are going to settle on the Disruptor. Alright then, Disruptor is pretty good against Clock or getting glimpses back after hook shotting in, but this supporting duo is very utility heavy. Not a lot of damage between these two. Yeah, it's uh, it's so it's pretty good against Clock, like I mentioned, but uh, I think NS Pacemaker were kind of are kind of aware that they were going to pick Disruptor, that's why I didn't like it as well, and uh, I wonder how they're going to react to this. The supporting duo here from Newbie Miracle is pretty squishy and can get dived uh, quite a lot if uh, any Spacemaker try, wants to go aggressive, maybe even pick up a Bloodseeker or something. I'd love to see an aggressive trial link coming out from Energy Pacemaker. Urshaker is going to be required to submit, or probably required to sit mid, depending on what the mid lane is from Energy Pacemaker. And that's going to weaken up their lane quite a bit. Disruptor against a tri lane doesn't contribute a lot. Against a solo offlaner, he can zone fairly effectively, but Disruptor needs follow-up and needs help. And if he gets isolated, he's very susceptible to being killed. I think the aggressive path for Energy Pacemaker could work very well. Yeah, I wonder if they want to get uh, roaming, uh, some roaming hero like Spirit Breaker as well. Uh, it's very risky though, though, then, because you pick a lot of heroes that gets countered by Disruptor, but if you make it work, Disruptor gets killed before you can do anything. So it's a bit of a high risk, high reward kind of a pick, and uh, I don't think energy pace makers will go for it. They feel confident in uh, in their playstyle and don't want to go for the risky picks. Better play it uh, safe and pick the standard heroes, because you know you're better than you be Miracle. Yeah, Joe Too Late also plays both the Clockwork and the Spirit Breaker for them, and I think they'd much rather have him on the clock, and it would maybe be a little bit uncomfortable for them. I mean, Spirit Breaker is a fairly easy hero to play, but uh, just not as much experience as their own offlaner. So, Energy Pacemaker, let's see what they're going to end up going for. With Lena Band out, they're going to go for an Ancient Apparition. Very interesting. A good hero to go for that aggressive tri lane. Yeah, it's really good against uh, what Newbie Miracle has, especially the Shadow Fiend. Uh, he likes to go for the mech, obviously. And uh, he's pretty squishy without it, but now he's squishy with, with it either way. And if you pick uh, another hero that can dive a lot together with the Clockwork, you can kill a lot of heroes with that air blast. I, they're going to pick a mid laner, but I would really like to see Bloodseeker, but it's not the strongest hero against Shadow Fiend or Shaker. Yeah, in lane struggles quite a bit. It's going to be a Broodmother pick for a newbie Miracle. 
I'm okay with this. Energy Pacemaker's Maker's Wave Clear isn't that great until Gyrocopter gets more points and more farm to where Flat Cannon can clear out the spiders. Ancient Apparition and Rubick as a supporting duo can really struggle against this brood. Yeah, and uh, Energy Pacemaker has to think this through a lot. How they're gonna decide to draft or they ban on the last pick. It's, uh, it's not that easy right now for them. They don't have a natural hero that could be really good here against the Broodmother. They have the Gyro safe end, which is decent against Broodmother. But it's going to be very hard to find the Broodmother, and I'm not sure how what they can do to deal with it. Uh, they should just look for a stable hero to deal with the rest, I think. Try and uh, kill as much as possible, and uh, don't uh, let Broodmother just dominate completely. Yeah, I think at this point it's damage control. The Broodmother's going to be an issue for them, but it's probably better just to make sure that the Shadow Fiend doesn't ball out of control, or whatever the safe lander for Newbie Miracle doesn't get too much. Yeah, lost ban from Newbie Miracle. They might just ban out something like Axe, because it counts as Brood or Legion, even though I don't think those picks are perfect or very good. Uh, it's still something that can counter the Brood, and you might want to get rid of it either way. It's going to be a Templar Assassin Ben coming up from Newbie Miracle. I think that's fair enough. Yeah, it would have done yeah. pretty well against the Shadow Fiend in mid, and yeah, a reasonable Ben. It's a pretty good. Uh, Dragonite is a really good pick. It, uh, it can deal with Broodmother, and also it fits, uh, like I mentioned, that you can just deal with other heroes. It's really tanky, and uh, it will be able to sustain against what. Newbie Miracle has. Also, it's, it can rush BKB, which is very good against uh, Disruptor and Shadow Fiend. Just get on them and kill them. The safe laner for the side of Newbie Miracle is going to be a select to round out their lineup. That's a very surprising pick, in my opinion. It gets hot countered by AA. Yeah. Uh, it's very good against uh, AA and Rubik to kill them, though. Uh, just gank them, and they can't do much. But going in to any space maker, if he gets hit by that, he can get blown up very fast. Yeah, with no hope of being able to rejoin the fight later. It is incredibly scary to play Slug against AA, but we'll just have to see. If he gets enough momentum, he could just hunt the AA and the Rubik and make sure that that isn't an issue inside the fights just by eliminating that threat at the very start. Yeah, the Brood plus Slark combo is pretty strong, though. It's uh, probably what they were looking for. Uh, Brood puts a lot of pressure on the enemy, and uh, when they try to gather up and uh, kill Brood, uh, then Slark comes in and you can lose everyone. Or if you try and spit push and deal with Broodmother like that, Slark comes in and kills the heroes that alone. It's a very strong combo, and uh, it's gonna be a bit scary. They need good warding from EP here. Well, quick introduction to both of these teams. Fan gonna be playing on the Gyrocopter 5400 on the Ancient Apparition. Zhao Tu Lei and his Clockwork Lei on the Rubik. And Old Chicken will be playing his Dragonite. One of his better heroes, in my opinion. On the Radiant side of the map, it's going to be Newbie Miracle. Shadow Fiend's gonna be taking the mid lane by KKKK. And Earthshaker will be played by Origami 621 on the Disruptor. Chang on the Broodmother. And last but not least, Slark gonna be handled by Christina. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see how uh, Newbie Miracle plays the early game. In general, you want to smoke up uh, when Broodmother gets a few spiders, maybe level 5, and try and kill everyone in safe lane. That's a pretty normal way to play uh, when you're Broodmother. And EP is very squishy on the safe lane. None of their heroes can tank those spider links. Christina going to walk around the corner, maybe in a lot of trouble. They have a lift, pulling it back into the rocket barge with chilling touch on four heroes. It's not going to be enough because Christina pounces to the low ground, a close call, but now he's boxed out by the clockwork. Battery salt rolling with no pounce available. Christina might die yet, walking right into the gyrocopter again. There's rocket barge here, and Christina is going to go down. It looked like it might have been good, but Danish Pacemaker, they had more than enough heroes to go for that very important first blood. Yeah, that's not what you want to have happen. He... Made a good pounce on the low ground, but Shadow can take a lot of damage with boots on Gyro. He might actually go down. This is scary. Rubik's also coming in with boots as well. If they can get the lift on the KKKK, that's going to be the kill. Gyrocopter is going to draw himself the second blood this game. Energy Pacemaker, that's a roaring start for them. Not only is that Shadow Fiend down, he's forced to buy a TP to get back to the lane quick enough. He uses one of his pooled tangos, and with his tango on cooldown for 45 seconds, most of the Breathe Fire Harass early on from Old Chicken is going to stick. This is a very scary start. Yeah, this is not what you want to have happen. Uh, and uh, EP are gonna go aggressive Krylin here. Uh, they might roam a lot with their supports, but they're gonna leave the Clockwork 1 versus 1 uh, against the Brood. Brood will most likely have a very good time on here on top lane, but with this early start for EP, I think Clockwork can uh, get a fast bottle and just spam Rocket Flare to deal with the push from Brood. 
Yeah, and if he gets himself a poor man's shield, he's also going to significantly reduce damage. Mid another gank in mid, they find the poor Shadow Fiend, pulled back in with the chilling touch, and already Shadow Fiend is on a terrible start this game. Old Chicken is primed to do a lot better than he rightfully should. Bottom lane, the pullback ban since the sports have left and the gyrocopter's isolated, and he will go down in trade. I'm not sure if that's worth it for Energy Pacemaker. It's good to keep the SF down, but losing your gyro is probably just as bad. It's something at least, and uh, Sheng again with the mass amount of mana region, 5 uh, clarities, he really likes this style, to, ha to use his spells quite a lot instead of having maybe a bit more survivability. Yeah, and it'll help him stamp out these spiders, but ooh, nice deny coming out from the clockwork, he actually denies the spawn spiderlings, that's uh, a small win for the clockwork, makes his lane a little bit easier. Yeah, and Rubik suiciding to get back to lane uh, without losing any gold. Buys his uh, boots and some region for his teammates and himself. Even though they kill off the gyrocopter in bottom lane, across the board, Newbie Miracle are getting outlaned. The Slark isn't farming even after the gyrocopter kill, and now that the supports are down here, that's going to maintain the case. And Dragonite is doing very well against the SF. Usually early on, the SF should have a significant advantage and start pulling ahead even. Dragonite just spams out his breathe fire to get CS, but 11 to 4 compared to 4 and 0. That's very impressive. Yeah, I really like that Dragonite uh, uh, or Chicken here bought his Quelling Blade. It's gonna help you a lot in getting the last hits because uh, after a while Shadow Fiend starts hitting so hard you can't lost it. Uh, but with the Quelling Blade and some uh -huh. spam you can do a lot of work. And Old Chicken finds himself his signature haste rune. He's going to be running very deep behind enemy lines and he could just dive the Shadow Fiend I want to say. Yeah, I think he will get the skill. He's looking for the Curium maybe, but he's just gonna decide to dive. Yep, going under the tower, he's going to start with the Breathe Fire, he doesn't have enough mana for the stun, but it doesn't matter, Raze is going to miss, and Dragonite will draw blood with no TPs in from either of the sports, and with the bottle, he'll keep himself in lane, that's a big deal, and with no vision, Newbie Miracle had no idea that he got the haste. Yeah, this start for uh, Newbie is not good at all, and uh, will he find another kill, or will Newbie do? They'll pull back the Disruptor, Disruptor dropping low, Rock Brush and Chilling Touch will get his death, and in trade the Rubik will die for the enemy side. It's probably going to end there, they'll slow them down with the Icy Vortex. Christina has a pounce, but Earthshaker not so lucky, with no mana for the Fissure. It looks like Origami's going to go down, Christina's eating so much damage, that's one kill, and Christina's trying to run away, he'll salve up, but that salve is cancelled, he has the pounce, but he is uh, yeah, just going to be run down, the Gyrocopter has face, Christina's down. Yeah, he's gonna die, and uh, AA survives as well. This is a really bad start for EP. Uh, Brumal is starting to make a comeback at least, that's uh, what they need. And they need this Brute to have an amazing impact this game, but I'm not sure if it's gonna be enough either way. Yeah, she needs to make so much space. She has the Orb of Venom, and if any of these supports come in solo to that lane, they could get killed, but uh, the Clockwork is pretty tanky, and I'm not sure if he can kill the Clockwork solo since they are on pretty much the same exact level. and. Although the Clockwork's going to leave the lane sooner rather than later, once he gets his level 6 and now he can bring another little bit of space to push, it's not going to make up for the fact that all the other lanes are going pretty terribly. Yeah, a problem for this brute as well is that any core from EP can come to this lane and clean up the spider links. He can't push against either any of the cores, which is not good that anyone can just rotate there and defend it. It's not really what you want. Sentry on the lane, Clockwork will flare down all of the spiderites and that's quite a large chunk of farm for him. Fisher down in bottom lane, gonna catch out Fan, but no kill is going to be had. Lay chasing forward with the boots, not going to find a telekinesis. It's a dangerous situation down in bottom lane for both of these teams. But the good yeah. news for New Miracle, Shadow Fiend's starting to catch up. Yeah, so, uh, mid lane is passive, which will favor uh, Shadow Fiend eventually, unless this happens. He's going to get Dragon Tailed stunned in mid and trying to run under his tower. I don't think he can survive this. Another hit and the Breathe Fire. That tick damage looks like it's lethal. I'm not sure why he turned around there. Maybe he was dead. And uh, same time Slark going down. This is not looking good for Newbie at all. He's losing heroes on almost every lane. Only Broodmother is surviving, but he's getting outfarmed by a Clockwork. Yeah, it's not a pretty picture. 5 1 and 1 on the Gyrocopter. It Less than five minutes into the game, Jarcopter is already a hero that can do a lot. It's a little bit misleading to see the raw CS score of the Clockwork and the Brood, though, because at least ten of those are the little spiders from the Brood. Yeah, he doesn't have this much losses, but also with the early bond rune, his uh, net worth is ahead of the Brood. And uh, I wonder how Brood is going to play this now. What he's going to look for? Is he going to start uh, Youngling? He should probably creep skip. Uh, in my opinion, to try and force this tower to go down. And Clockwork doesn't have any sustain anymore with an empty bottle and no region. 
Shadow Feeder mid lane going to be stunned with a fissure. Turn around on Old Chicken is possible, but they tell Kinesis and pull back onto the Shadow Fiend. He'll just get right like down, even without another breathe fire. They'll be able to get that kill 10 to 3. Energy Pacemaker are running away with this game. Yeah, dominating this early game completely. And now uh, Coco gets that region as well with the trunk. It hasn't gotten it delivered yet, but it will get out pretty soon. And he can thank the Quake Place under the tower, so Brood will probably not be able to tower dive this hero. Yeah, he's gonna start trying to cut the creep away, but every time Clockwork throws out a flare, he's getting a lot of gold from these spiders. It's it's very scary. Clockwork has level 7, although his solo kill potential is a little bit less so, since he did go for the max flare build, as you probably should against the Broodmother. He can still set up kills to or at any lane with sufficient rotations from bottom lane. They're diving Christina under the tower. The Slark has no real hope of survival. Pulled back in. They'll glimpse back the gyrocopter. He'll pounce into trees and TP. So maybe I spoke too soon. Slark is going to live and Lay is going to die to the tower. No, he smokes! Oh. And the Rubik survives. That was clutch. That was impressive play. Really a good presence of mind. And uh, AA and uh, Gyro are very deep here. But the problem is there's no one who can TP in here. Brute can't really TP. She needs her spiders and Shadowfin will die if she t he TPs even if they are low HP. And they'll keep on this pressure down in the bottom lane. They can put some damage into the tier 1. And Gyrocopter is getting so much farm. Urshiku is going to waddle his way down in this bottom lane. But there aren't really any kills available to him. If the Ancient Apparition man fights him straight up, he might die. But he has a Gyrocopter close enough. And that's not going to happen. The Breedmother is trying to put as much damage as possible onto this tier 1 in top lane. But the Clockwork is just casually tanking the tower. Or tanking the creeps under his tower. And he's doing just fine for himself. Yeah, he's going really good items there. Getting the bottle is needed to get the farm and also kill the spoilings. And then the trunk quest to stay have regen and also medic one is never bad. It's a very good item choices by him. And uh, this game is already looking very grim for Newbie with 7k gold lead for EP already. It's uh, a lot considering it's only 7 minutes in. And Clockwork also has a ring of health. Do you think this is going to be a vanguard for him? Not sure it could be, uh, but... Uh, I'm not sure how he's thinking. It's a very good item in general. Uh, it's not. It's it's always okay item rather. But he could go with something like a hood. But it's very money expensive. Yeah, I think I like the Vanguard if he's going to stay in lane against this Broodmother. If they're just going to park the Clockwork up here with the Vanguard. The Broodmother can't do any damage to him. Yeah, he's probably going to go to safer items, which is Vanguard on bottom lane. The Slark is going to get dived. We'll be able to pounce TP this time around. They catch Vision with the Vortex, but the Telekinesis is just a little bit too late. It looked like he'd get that one off, but yeah, not going to happen. But the Tier 1 tower is going to fall just the same. Energy Pacemaker will still get a win out of that. This Lark, even though he lives there, isn't farming. He's sitting on 15 last hits at 8.5 minutes in. Yeah, that was a bit weird. It looked like he could have lifted there, but this Dragonite is already off to 2k gold and has his... Uh and the medic one. I wonder what he's gonna go. He could go for drums, which is not too uncommon, or go something like Shadowblade because he's this far ahead. And another haste turn. This guy, man. I have no idea. He's gonna open up with the dragon cell and follow up with the breathe fire. Fisher will help a little bit for the Shadow Fiend, but he's just gonna get run down. Enchant Totem will delay a little bit more, but it just doesn't matter. Haste, the best he can hope for is an Ancient Sedai. Not gonna happen. Dragonite secures the kill. And now Earthshaker, he's spotted out. This time the Telkinesis is there, and Origami will be dropped. Another two kills for Energy Pacemaker. This advantage is getting to obscene territory. You have almost a 9,000 net worth lead, you have almost a 4,000 experience lead for energy pacemaker. This is huge. You have a Midas on your Broodmother, but she's the only hero that's doing close to where she should be. Yeah, uh, I don't know how Walsh can man manage to do this. He gets a haste run every time. Uh, they have good rune control, but still, he gets every it, time it's I ridiculous. see him. It's uh, incredible. At least the Brunman managed to force Clockwork to TP away, but he's already back to the lane and he picked up the Vanguard. He is really tanky right now, already up to 39 HP. Yeah, it's scary. Down bottom lane, they're going to go for a push down here again. With the Dragon Knight joining the fray, this tier 2 is probably going to fall. Slark can do nothing about this. This is Slark at his weakest, I think. Just being balled up against. There's Top nothing lane. to do. I think the shot yeah. is dead. And the brood lane would block him, maybe. With the Vanguard, they just can't touch this clockwork. The brood links will absorb a little bit of that battery assault damage, but not enough. And tier 2 tower push will continue with the Dragonite dropping that tick damage. Tier 2 is going to fall, and that clockwork took no damage. Like, almost no damage. Yeah, it was some major misplay by the brood. Uh, he should have blocked with spiders and let uh, 
and let the disruptors run away. Uh, Clockwork doesn't have face boots, so he can't run through the spiders. I'm not sure what he was really thinking. I think they are on a tilt right now, uh, especially Sheng on his brood here. After the last game, he, he didn't do anything, and it's not looking good this game either. We're shot and going to be attempted by Energy Pacemaker, and I say attempted, it's more or less just going to be taken. Newbie Miracle aren't in a position where they can contest. Even though Disruptor and Earthshaker in theory are really good around the Roshan pit, we still don't have ultimates for either of them. Yeah, and this gold network is actually insane. They're getting 1k advantage for every minute, and this Roshan is not gonna help a newbie at all. Oh, this is going to be an Aegis, presumably for Fan. This Gyrocup is getting out of control. Oh, Chicken is as well. Newbie Miracle? The only real hope for them is to catch them off guard if they dive too deep and then maybe get a glimpse back onto somebody and kill them off. But even that is so very difficult. Their heroes from behind don't function very well. Yeah, they really want to have an early game advantage with the Brood and the Slark. And if, when the Midas at least, it's pretty common, but I don't think we'll ever have the farm to contest. Broodman is very bad in general when you're behind. Look at him try to attack this clockwork. He's almost out regening the Broodmother's attacks. They're going to bring in the Shadow Fiend. That might be enough to kill off Xiao Chule, and finally they get something. That's 406 gold for the Broodmother. That's an important kill. They they uh, realized how tanky was and committed enough arrows for it, which is important. Bottom lane, Dragonite is going to go for this kill with Shadow Blade and the ultimate. Hey, ultimate's going to connect. Christine is dead. Nothing he can do. Breathe is going to connect, and he has a pounce and an ultimate, but he can't regen during that. Oh, actually, he does survive. Ah, fair enough. Just short of the damage coming out from the DK. Yeah, it was. Uh, I thought it was gonna go down, but it managed to survive. A bit lucky there. Uh, did he have Porma Shield? No, I think he Stout Shield propped like another attack, which could have been. It was probably the difference between life or death and death. Ancient stack going to be stolen by Energy Pacemaker. I'm not sure if they stacked this themselves or if Newbie Miracle did. I'm pretty sure they just stacked it before taking it. But this is kind of the state of the game. There's nothing Newbie Miracle can do to punish this rotation. Even though Fan is at half HP, he has Aegis. Yeah, Fan can be play so aggressive and the net worth is not looking good for Newbie. I have no clue how what their plan is to make a comeback for this game. They have to split with somehow. Oh, it's Lark again. He's gonna get caught out. This time around they have more than enough damage. The Shadow Fiend's blown up in the north, and Fan doesn't even lose his Aegis. They'll glimpse him back, but that's up to the high ground. Just a thank you from Gyrocopter to the Disruptor, and you know, Old Chicken can just sit behind this tower. There's nothing to fear. He has 10 wand charges. He's gonna get fissured, but with the Max Out Dragon Spud, they'll just keep on going for this push. Energy Pacemaker, this is almost getting to GG territory. Yeah, I think, uh, unless they manage to win a fight, Pretty soon, this EP is just gonna push high ground and take Rex this early. With Aegis and uh, Dragonite being one of the tanker heroes, they can do it. They're probably gonna wait for next LA Dragon form before they go, though. Yeah, that's a silver lining. Also, Chang is still keeping up with the clockwork in lane, but the items on the Slark especially are really very sad to look at. He's being outfarmed by the enemy Ancient Apparition, and that's because Energy Pacemaker applied so much pressure. He's died four times, and there's no space on this map. Yeah, I wonder what Brutemar is gonna go now. He has uh, enough gold for buy, to buy a day, Dagon, which is pretty common, but I don't know what item would make a difference here, really. It's gonna be a tough decision for him. He's probably trying to figure out what could actually make a difference here. I think they kind of need him to join the fights. I'm not sure what the best item is for that, though. One item I don't think does it. I think Brutemar needs at least two. Yeah, I agree. He's gonna go Necrobook. I guess that's an okay decision, but... Slark on bottom lane. Again caught out. It's just going to be the same story, even though I only got the tail end of that. He is just blown to shreds. There's nothing he can do to survive once the Ice Blast connects, as long as he can't Mid get lane. the TV through. Oh, action again. The Clockwork's going to be glimpsed away. That'll save Shadow Fiend's life. At least there's something. Yeah, the, the, the shop door. Only being able to save. But it's like I talked about early game as well. I uh, mean, in uh, the draft. Uh, the shop door is an okay pick against Clockwork, but. The problem is they're so squishy, and they can get dived kind of hard, and Disruptor can only save one, one hero temporarily, nothing else. They're going to go for the high ground push. Fissure stolen by the Rubik, and Dragonite will continue pushing. Even without having spent the majority of his gold, the Shadow Fiend, or this Dragonite is almost impervious to any of the damage. It'll just keep on going. There's a DD on the clockwork. Although that just expires, it looks like Energy Pacemaker can try to commit for high ground. But the silver lining for Newbie Miracle is they have a Broodmother that's alone with a tier two, but that's not going to be pushing fast enough.
Yeah, it hasn't gotten his necro book, necro book out yet. So he doesn't oh, have that Fisher percent. onto the Shadow Fiend, cut out Ice Blast will kill him off. Yeah, this is looking like a GG call very soon, unless uh, Newbie can pull a miracle here. I don't see it happening without Static Swarm on the Disruptor. It's a 3v5 at the moment. The Broodmother can't contribute anything to this fight, even if she had a TP and even if she could join it. Tier 3 Tower is going to fall. They'll try their best to spam them out, but this is going to be a sub 15, 16 minute barracks. Yeah, this is not looking good. Brood is finally forced to TP, but I don't think she can do anything. They have to try and pick someone off with uh, Glimpse when they fall back. He'll Fissure up the Earthshaker. He'll throw his Fissure back, but uh, Glimpse away. We'll save his life for now. The Flare, the Ice Blast. Will the Ice Blast connect? Hook shot in. The Ice Blast kills off the Earthshaker on contact, and the Disruptor's cratered. This clock looks so tanky. Even without mana, he's going to be able to survive. Walks casually back to the rest of his team. One race is going to connect, but it's going to cost Shadow Fiend his life unless they decide to go for the Broodmother and well, kill off that Brood. Yeah, this is not looking good at all. I think Noob is going to call it very soon. Uh, yeah, it's there. And just a completely one-sided game. Just from uh, laning phase and draft, there was uh, little chance for Newbie to do anything this game. No, a dominating performance coming out from Energy Pacemaker. They get their hands on some of their signature comfort heroes and they just roll with it. That was a disgusting performance. Yeah, Energy Pacemaker making uh, some uh, major out playing. Like, yeah, the draft is... Uh, I don't really know. Just from the two first picks, and the pacemaker already uh, drafted a uh, new bit that like. Yeah, in general, I think that sums it up. Well, thanks for watching. That's going to be the last series that you're going to see for quite some time. The next one's going to be coming up in two hours on the stream, but you'll have different casters. Your casters that you've been listening to for this and the last series were Grandis V and Kefka. You can find us at Grandis V and Kefka Dota on Twitter, and you'll find us here casting on Hefo TV more often than not at twitch.tv slash hefotv1 and the likes on Twitter and Facebook you can find when we're going to be going live and with what games. So hope to see you soon, but for now we're going to be signing off. See ya. GG.